A CD Projekt Red employee comes out and speaks to rumors on the internet about Cyberpunk 2077's delay. Everything in regards to parody is cleared up, right? Or no? Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another episode of The Medicine. You know what I'm saying? Glad to be back doing it in this format. But with that said, before we get too deep into this one, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because y'all know the deal. Y'all know it. I am not too proud to ask. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so y'all know how I like to do it. When I'm doing the medicine, I break it up into three parts. I do the checkup, I do the analysis, and then, then I do the prescription. Okay, so first the checkup. All right, so parity has become a big issue and a big question in the gaming community as of late. On the heels of recent rumors regarding Cyberpunk 2077's delay, those concerns grew even further. The rumor focuses on issues building the game on current consoles with a big emphasis on the Xbox console. Now, admittingly, this emphasis on Xbox has been used as fanboy fodder. PlayStation fanboys have been using this news to proclaim why the Series X releasing without first party exclusives undoubtedly is a no win next gen for the console. On the flip side, you have Xbox fanboys grasping at any straws to squelch the conversation altogether. Left in the middle of this discussion are those with legitimate consumer concerns and questions regarding this issue. However, a CD Projekt Red dev now speaks out. He makes a post that counters those focused on one aspect of this rumor. But as many claim, does this kill the parody discussion altogether? Let's examine. On to the analysis. So to many, it does kill the discussion of parody. The, their argument for this are due to a few reasons. First, the understanding of the word optimization. Two, the belief that if Xbox solely is not the issue of the delay of this game, that kills the parity concerns altogether. And three, we should not listen to rumors and insiders at all. Hmm. Okay, on to the prescription. So, okay, optimization is done everywhere. So the entire discussion is a non-issue. That's the first argument that's being made here. Okay, so let me do this. I want to do this. So that, so we start this off slow for the remedial who completely lose the thesis of the discussion. I want to start off with this, okay? Let's, let's look at the textbook de definition of the word optimize. The textbook definition is to make as perfect, effective, or functional as possible. And as an example, that's given in Webster's uh, definition, it's optimize your computer for speed and memory. All right, so with that being said, for instance, when you optimize your PC, there may be some dials that you just, you just have to flip up and down, but in culmination with that, all right, depending on what it may be able to handle, per the CPU, GPU, whatever, you may have to also delete applications and files to ensure performance, right? In addition to that, let's go to the phone. When you optimize your phone, when you optimize its performance, suggested applications may appear that you should delete to ensure efficiency, correct? Now, I bring this up because Corey Barrog, famed director at Sony Santa Monica Game Studios and behind the uh, reboot of God of War that was heavily acclaimed, sent out a tweet, okay? Let's look at what he sent out. So Corey Barrog sends this tweet out and the tweet reads, in response to the rumors of Cyberpunk 2077's delay, he says, every game runs badly until you optimize it for the hardware and the final push before goal. Okay. Now, that tweet that's at the heart of the matter now, everyone is misconstruing as it appears. He sent that out in an apparent attempt to calm down concerns, all right? However, with the understanding of many with the concerns over parity, and per what I illustrated prior regarding optimization, because of the of the fact that he's the dev and I'm not, I ask this. Hey, Corey, can you clarify for dummies like me? What type of things occur when you say optimize? That would include re removing functionality, correct? 
not just scaling. And as you can see here, <laughs> no answer. All right. Therefore, this is leaving uh, those with questions without clarity. And again, that's how many feel. Many like my brother who I've mentioned in previous videos and podcasts who really don't play this console war stuff. He doesn't play it at all, to be honest. But he's opting out of the Xbox ecosystem altogether because at launch, he would prefer to get something that at least is promising next-gen experiences around the board. So the discussion continues. All right, so the next thing is, the next part of their argument is, this kills the parody discussion altogether. All right, so let's do this. Let's compare what was said, right? Let's compare what was said by this quote unquote insider and contrast it to what was said by the CD Projekt Red Dab. All right, let's do it like this. Okay, so, and oh, uh, shameless plug, check out the broadbandbullies.com website where we talked about the story there, all right? So we got an article there where we're highlighting the story as well. All right, but let's go to the main source, which is at altchair.com, all right? And their title reads, Cyberpunk 2077 delayed because of current gen consoles, new source claims. And the headline is, according to a Polish insider, Boris Ness Pilek, I know I butchered that. I apologize, Boris. The main reason for the main reason for Cyberpunk 2077's delay lies in current gen consoles, which are reportedly not powerful enough to run the game properly. Okay. Now, let's go to what the CD Projekt Red person says. In contrast to that, CD Projekt Red person sent this out. He says, Corey Balrog hit the nail on the head. And this is referring to the tweet that I read earlier from um, Corey. Of course, we're optimizing, remember that word, for the Xbox One and for the PlayStation and for the PC, because that's what you do in the last stretches of game development. While the game is made, lots of things are unoptimized because they're in flux, changing, and still not finished. So the simple answer is like the delayed game, we delayed the game because of X, make, for good rumor, but don't hold to a lot of truth. There's always many reasons, pay close attention to that. Among them, I can only speak for myself, pay close attention to that, simply fixing bugs so the game is as polished as possible, no hidden agendas on making, just working on making the game better. Okay, so to that point, notice how the story reads. Okay, let's go back to the story. Let me do this, I'm gonna go back to the story. Notice how the story reads that the main reason for Cyberpunk 27's delay, right? As spoken by the insider. And notice how the dev, let's go back to what he says. Notice how the dev says blaming it on reason X is the reason, you know what I'm saying? Like he's referring to just pretty much saying that it's all because of one thing, you know, it's foolish. Okay, and there's always many reasons to, to his point. Now, if you read the article from the insider and listen to what he claims in totality in the rumor, he never narrows it down to just one specific source. He talks most, multiple issues, uh, multiple consoles with the heavy emphasis on Xbox, all right? So with that being said, so those who focus only on Xbox issues and proclaim that's it undoubtedly, that's the reason why it was delayed. They were made to look stupid as they should. Beyond that, there was no impact made on parody concerns altogether in relation to the discussion that we're having today. All right. Lastly, the argument that is being made by these people or is, we should not listen to rumors or insiders. <laughs> okay, first off, I wanna say this, and anybody with a reasonable mindset, I feel should feel the same way. Anyone who takes a rumor as a 100% fact before it is officially concern, uh, confirmed, excuse me, is running a fool's errand. I don't care who the source is or the reliability. That said, there are those, right, that are putting on their go-go gadget fraud rockets and blasting off into Hypocriteville. Let me show you something. 
I said I, I give you exhibit E, I believe it is. <laughs> All right, you see this? This is a tweet from homeboy Jason Schreier of Kotaku. He's a claim writer, and he's a good inside and a good insider that you know brings forth a lot of rumors that come to fruition. He says in this tweet, okay. Time for some good news. Sony's PlayStation 4 exclusive, Horizon Zero Dawn, is coming to PC this year. Sources tell Kotaku it's an unprecedented move that may help in help usher in a platform agnostic future. All right. However, fanboys have used this tweet right here to proclaim that other groups of fanboys caught quote unquote L's regarding PC ports of Horizon Zero Dawn coming forward okay now there's been no official statement from sony so let me ask you this is this bs we shouldn't at least listen to or examine this no jason schreier despite what you feel about his opinions is good at what he does and has an impeccable track record in this regard same as being said about the, the polish guy that they're saying is his equivalent all right therefore there is nothing wrong with mentioning these possibilities and deep diving into them and talking potential impact. This help gives a broader view to non-fanboy consumers, and it also helps them better understand all possibilities. But it's the fanboys who, when the rumor or insider does not put their favorite piece of plastic in favorable light, they want to play Rage Against the Machine and fight the system all over the internet. Please. <laughs> so in closing, what the CD Projekt Red Dev, um, what it res his response, what it does is it kills the noise that Xbox definitively held back Cyberpunk 2077. It does not kill the discussion that is spurned from Digital Foundry videos where the two guys are discussing parody and give you an examples of how it would have had impact in the past, all right? And from the guy Paris, who everyone is, uh, you know, retweeting that that um, dev notes from, you know what I mean? He himself, in his most recent stand, says he doesn't know if it has an impact on what can be presented because of parody. Now, in full disclosure, Paris said that he doesn't care if it has an impact or not because he believes that Xbox will work to make these experiences fun as possible at launch, regardless of where they're at. And that's a fair assessment to have. But for those with still looming concerns, only Xbox can answer those questions. And maybe they will take the time to clarify such, right? Um, on the thousandth episode of Gamertag Radio, that Paris, that I'm the aforementioned Paris, that he's a co-host on. And that is scheduled, my friends, for February 10th, 2020. And they will have a special guest, none other than Bill Spencer, as you see right here. That's a cool graphic. I like that. Now, I would say definitely check out that show and, and stay tuned with them for more details. Hopefully questions get answered. Now, will you flag flying fanboys, say that fast five, five times, who try to misrepresent mine or anybody's intention, you know what I'm saying, that's trying to foster discussion, I want you to understand this. Some of you or most of you just can't look past a crowd of Xbox or ponies behind you for meaningful gaming discussions. You also can't look past the podcast panel that you so eagerly would buff and represent. Therefore, going beyond just entertainment and having meaningful, fruitful, and deep diving conversations is not part of your repertoire. But to those that fit into this paradox of superficial flag carrying, that's a you problem. Never mistake mine or anybody else's that's trying to have thoughtful discussions Never, never mistake that desire for fruitful discussions and mix it up with your desire to belong and show off for your factions. We simply are not cut from the same cloth. I am here to ensure for gamers, everything gets put out on the table. You are simply here to fill your own plates. And that's it from your boy MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies content, the PNTS content, the Hard Knock Digital Life, uh, Hard Knock Digital Culture content, and the Stadia Dosage content that I provide. 
And with that being said, keep having those discussions, y'all. Forget the haters. Don't listen to the people that are trying to shame you because it's all in your best interest to have them. And with that said, you have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.